Hey everyone, it's Sam McKay here from Enterprise DNA. Today we're going to go into, we're going to do some more work on some procurement data. So, you know, checking out the purchasing or analyzing the purchasing within an organization. So in this case, what we might want to do is we might want to just look at things on, on an average basis, right? So uh, instead of looking at every individual purchase, if you were, say, a manager, you'd want to see, well, how are our average purchases in our departments going, for instance? And, and maybe you want to actually compare them versus a prior period, right? You might want to actually check out, well, um, you know, are we purchasing way more on average in a particular month, uh, on a month perspective than we were uh, same period last year or same period six months? Ago. So I'm going to show you how you can use a combination of techniques to actually work this out inside of Power BI. So, um, so I've already created I've already created a measure here which goes and calculates up the uh, the total amount of invoicing that we are doing. So uh, what I'm going to do as well is I'm just going to quickly throw this inside a measure table um, just to make it a bit clearer. So I'm just going to put this inside something I call key measures. And I'm a big believer in uh, these uh, measure groups, so I highly recommend implementing them when you can. And I'm just going to move this one in there. Okay, so we've got uh, invoicing amounts here, right? So now what we need to do, now what we need to do is, well, we want to work out averages through time. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to look through time and see what time frame we actually are making purchases. So we've got all the way from January 2015 all the way to January 17. So we need to work out, well, I want to work out, well, on a, on a department basis, how much um, are we actually invoicing per month? So at the moment, um, you know, if I went and grabbed this uh, piece, of this invoicing total, and I put it against the, if I went and found my department context like so, and added it into the axes, so you see here that it's it's very easy, it's very easy to go and get total. So the total invoicing over time. Um, and it's then very easy to overlay, say, a slicer from your date table um, and then change the slicer and say, okay, well, I want to look at a short, shorter time frame and then that's going to impact the context and then it's going to update your models or update the results in your models. But say, for instance, within this date context, you actually want to see, okay, well, on average in the months in here, how much are we actually spending? How much are we actually spending per uh, per department? So, how do you do it? Well, it's not from where we're at right now. It's not significantly, um, you know, too much. It's not too much more uh, advanced from where we're at. It just takes an understanding of how to use the. Uh, the uh, average X uh, function, and also what virtual table we want to place inside that average X function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just do it and, and we'll talk through how it all works. So uh, I'm going to go, I'm going to call this average monthly purchases. And then I'm just going to jump down to a new line. And I'm going to go average X. And then inside of here, you see who we can actually put a table. Well, the table that I want to place inside of here is a virtual table of every single month. And so how I'm going to find that is I'm actually going to go and find my month and year uh, dimension inside my date table. And that is going to do the iterating for me. So average X is an iterating function, right? And so we need to give it a table to go and iterate through. Well, in this case, we're giving it a virtual table of every month and year. And that's what's going to create the average uh, ultimately because it's only going to calculate up the amount of month and years inside this context. Uh, that is then going to give us the average. And so then within here, I'm going to add my invoicing. I'm going to actually add my measure, invoicing totals. And just like that, if I copy and paste this and sub in my average monthly purchases, you will see that now this number is quite different. So if I just add some data labels here, and I might uh, might change the color as well, might change the color just to make it stand out a bit. And so you see here that now the time, the numbers, I mean, they're clearly they're clearly much di uh, you know, different. Uh, so I'm just gonna just make this look a little bit better and place some formatting on these. And then I might also might also 
just not have any of these cool so the average obviously is much lower than the total right but this is what we wanted to work out we wanted to work out okay well, what is our average spending over this time period versus uh, over this time period that we now have selected so if i go and move this you're going to see that, that that average is going to change right that average is going to change now i also said well we could actually we could actually work out okay well, we want to compare right so it's it's all good just looking at the average but what if we actually want to compare our average purchasing over this time period well we might want to compare it to a time period before and so it's also from what we've got and we're just branching out um, i talk about this all the time a branch you you start with your simple measures and then you just branch out into into more and more techniques um, dax techniques and then so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go um monthly uh we'll call it average monthly purchases ly and i'm just going to go calculate this is where calculate comes in and then i'm going to go average monthly purchases then i'm going to use date add and then i'm going to put dates in here number of intervals is minus one and remember you could you could actually create a range of different intervals there but in this case we're just going to go year and then now based on this context i can actually compare these now and that's what i'm going to do in this chart here i'm going to compare and obviously i'm just going to format this one and so now i'm going to compare within this one our average monthly purchases over the time frame we have selected here versus exactly that same time frame last year so that's some pretty cool analysis right it's some pretty cool analysis that we were able to get to um it's it's very similar techniques that i use in a lot of videos uh, that i put on enterprise dna tv it's actually not that different but i love showcasing it in just different data scenarios and that's the and that's the cool thing about power bi they're very transferable you learn a technique you can transfer it to many different data scenarios time comparisons don't change no matter what uh, data scenario you you're actually working in right um, and very quickly we were able to get some pretty cool insight and we could go even further right we could go way further i mean we we can now we could now branch out and say well what's the difference in average monthly purchases from uh, this month to uh, another month uh, of this this time period versus the last time, other time period uh, and then we could work out well, what's the percentage difference and we could work out well, what was the percentage percentage growth through time there's just so many different so many different ways you can um you know you can implement this um, and, and do it really quickly right we'll do it really really quickly i mean it's so easy to go and just change this time frame and then just analyze well you know what is the what was the difference what was the difference um and then and obviously that can um, you know, you can identify or, or drill into, I mean, you could set this up where you could actually drill into this particular element and see, well, why? Well, what what contributed to these purchases? Well, why do we why do we purchase more here? Was it from a t particular uh, person within this function? Um, was it because we needed to um, grow the, um, you know, the ability of the function to, to do more? So we were investing more in what they were, what they were doing, more services, more training, et cetera, et cetera. So the, um, you know, the insights go on and on and on. Okay, I'm going to wrap things up there. Um, this is a this is a, you know a pretty new data scenario, so some procurement and purchasing information. So I want to go through a lot of the um, cool insights that you can extract from it. Hopefully, you found this um, this one uh, really insightful. If you if you did love uh, love love, you could um, throw a like to the video. Really appreciate it. Uh, and, and don't forget to subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV. Um, I go through uh, a range of different um, reporting, data analysis type um, uh, work and uh, inside of Power BI, all inside of Power BI through, uh, through Enterprise DNA TV. So, um, and do that every weekday. So don't forget to subscribe. Okay, all the best. Um, hopefully this, uh, you, know, you can implement some of these things in your own analysis. Good luck.